For our final day in Aomori, we woke up for sunrise and headed to the Hachinoe morning markets before an eight hour drive that lay ahead of us to visit Shuriyazaki Lighthouse onto Cape Uma, the most northern point in Honshu, Japan's largest island, down to the famous Hoto Kegarua rock formations, and then finally down to Shin Aomori Shinkansen train station, where we would take the train back down to Tokyo. The drive itself was gorgeous. As you can see, in this part of Japan, there's very little traffic on the road. We had the whole road to ourselves, and at no point was it in any way stressful to be driving here. The landscape, the flora and the fauna are like nowhere else I'd ever seen in Japan before and in fact reminded me more of Australia or perhaps the United States. We followed the coast all the way, starting off with the coast on our right hand side then switching to the left before we finally got to our first destination of the day which would be Shiri Yazaki Lighthouse. Here, you must go through a checkpoint in order to get in, as there are wild horses, which they warn you about right at the destination. There was also people here from the Japanese Coast Guard, who I believe were looking out for illegal Chinese fishing ships, who would be perhaps fishing in Japanese waters. This place was absolutely gorgeous. We even saw a few surfers who were there catching some mid-morning waves. And here in August, as we were visiting, the temperature was around 20 to 25 degrees. Absolutely perfect. After a brief stop to explore the lighthouse, we headed west and on towards Cape Orma, the most northern point on Japan's largest island, Honshu. Cape Orma is made famous by the tuna fishing that takes place in the area and also because with it being the most northern point on the main island, is a very unusual place to visit. We found lots of people here with motorcycles and small cars, people who'd clearly put some effort into making the journey this far. And you can see by the roads, it is the most beautiful place to come and explore. It's very, very quiet here compared to the rest of Japan. And the scenery is unlike anywhere else with small fishing villages making up most of the society in this area. I wouldn't like to imagine what it's like here in the winter, but I can tell you that the local city of Aomori is the snowiest city in the world. But here in the middle of summer, 
a magical place to visit. It's a combination of factors which make this area so good for fishing tuna. The most expensive tuna ever caught was about $1 million and caught just off the coast of this area. We actually ate at the restaurant owned by the people who owned the ship which caught that tuna where we got ourselves some delicious fresh fish with some rice and absolutely stunning it was. We enjoyed our visit to Cape Orma but to come back be a big task. It was a one hour drive south from Cape Oma to Hoto Gihe Garua rock formations and it was absolutely worth it. The drive combined with about a 30 minute hike down from the parking lot to the beach down some stairs might sound like a lot of effort but it truly was worth it and the roads on the way here offered some terrific views of the coastline and the rock formations themselves. Should you not wish to walk there is a fishing port just a few miles south called Ushitaki which offers a ferry service into Koto Ke Garua rock formations should you wish to not walk down and then back up the stairs. This place was amazing. Photos and videos can barely do it justice, but just being there, it felt like a natural cathedral. Absolutely stunning. The waves themselves weren't too big today. However, you wouldn't want to go for a swim due to the presence of the sharp rocks covering the coastline. We loved it here. Finally, we had a long drive from Hoto Ke Garua down to Shinaomori Station to return the rental car and of course to take our train home. 
Our four days in Aomori had been incredible. We'd done so much in the time that we'd been here and it's hardly believable to think how much we actually did in what was essentially a long weekend. I'd love to come back to Aomori to explore further, but I don't feel like I need to. Thank you Aomori, thank you Japan.